everyone and welcome back to another Graphic 45 brand ambassador project. So I've literally just finished making this and the glossy accents are still a bit wet. So I'm gonna have to be a little bit careful. So I thought I'd show you how to make this really cute mini album using uh, one of the new dies I had in my uh, brand ambassador box the folder and sentiment die. So this is one I've been wanting for ages and I finally got my hands on it and I wanted to make folders with it so I could put into my albums, but also I wanted to use it in different ways. So this is the first way I've come up with using the fold and sentiment die to create signatures for a book with some uh, pockets so you can put your inserts in there and room then for small photos or journaling on each of the pages. So I'm holding it up here because of the glossy accents. Wasn't the wisest idea to add it before filming. So this is using the Life's a Bowl of Cherries. I've used some of the patterns of solids which are the 12 by 12s. You see the lovely colours. And I've used some of the 8 by 8 papers as well for the covers and the inside covers. And I'm hopefully going to add some decorations onto these as well. The regular tags, because that will fit nicely inside there as well. And I could do some photo mats to go in there using some of the scraps I've got. So if I wanted to do... Actually, let's... Trim this off. I could even, should we go for it? Let's corner around rounder. So here's my photo card now. Just gonna go inside our central pockets. So that is my uh, quick show of the folder mini album. But as I said, I'm gonna show you exactly how I made it now. So grab your die, grab some papers and some cardstock, and we'll get going. So you are ready to start the album, and. I'm going to start off making the cover. So I've got some of my uh, black chipboard from Graphic 45. Now I've cut this at six inches because it's a 12 by 12 sheet. So you get enough from uh, one sheet to make two covers. So here's my prototype one. So there is my six inches. And the other piece, so the waist piece, is actually what I'm using. So I've got my guillotine. And I'm going to cut a piece at four and a half. And another four and a half. And I need a one and a quarter piece. So currently it's a three. So if I take it down to two, that's one inch and a quarter. That means this piece then is the right size rather than coming from this side and you've only got that little piece there um, to line up that just keeps more of the top of the chipboard in contact with my guillotine to make it straighter so that's all the cutting for the chipboard done so I can put my guillotine away and then it's up to you to use your favorite method of covering. Mine is tape method. So I'm gonna be using the tape for my pages here anyway. So I'm gonna use it for my cover too. So I'm just quarter chomping two corners on each one just to give it a bit of interest. So the tape method is this, it's called a uh, framer's tape, which um, people who frame photographs and stuff use on the back of their photos, things when they're framing things. 
So it's like a papery type tape, but because it's used for photographs and stuff, it's archival safe. And okay to use with your photos too. So I've cut a piece slightly longer at the top and bottom of my grey board. And then I'm going to take my grey board and just place it just to the right of the centre. So keeping my tape nice and straight. Then I take my spine and I line it corner to corner. I find it easier to turn it like this. So I've got one in each hand and then I flip and press down. So just ease it apart, so I'm not pulling, just easing it apart and bringing the tape over. And that not only gives us a nice clean edge on that side, but it's also the hinge. So let's do the same on this side. So again, just an inch long on the top and bottom. The sticky side is up. And I'm going to place it down. Take my uh, other piece, my front cover. I'm lining up the two corners and flip over. And I'm just to neaten things up, I'm just going to take a piece of tape shorter than my um, cover and just sort of cover that gap between the tape. You can take your bone folder, your Teflon tool, There we go, our hinged cover already made. So whilst we're here, we're gonna do the spine as well. So for the spine, I've already cut my two pieces of cardstock. They're five and three eighths tall. I know I don't usually use like three eighths and stuff, but it needs to be that because of the size of our die. So it's five and three eighths. This one is two and a quarter. And this one is one and three quarters. So I'm going to grab my scoreboard and I'm scoring at half an inch and three quarters of an inch. So the half an inch is what our signatures are going to slide onto. And this quarter of an inch is going to be our flexible hinge. So I flipped it over and repeating half and three quarters. We're gonna do exactly the same on this one. So half and three quarters, turn it round, half and three quarters. So you've got Three score uh, four score lines in the middle of each one. So you've got two in the centre which you fold up to create a U shape. And the same on this one. So that would be your normal stacked hinge. You just glue that one onto that one. But we've got these flexible ones. So I've turned it upside down and I'm gonna fold these ones back. So 
So you've got sort of a U shape with two wings. And this one. I've got some strong double-sided tape here. And I'm just gonna place it inside those half inches. And then on the back, this is how we're going to attach to our grey board. So I'm going to put a couple of tapes there. So I've got tape on the back and tape on the flaps. And here my tape is a bit uh, too wide. I could just get some narrower tape, but With these Teflon coated scissors, I can cut my double sided tape in half and place it down the center. There and there. And I've exposed my double sided tape, but I just put some glue on top as well that's going to add some strength uh, and hold it tighter but also it means I can wiggle it for now so the tape will hold it in place for now and I'm just placing it down the center and making contact the next piece is optional but I find it's very useful is I'm going to take my scissors, I'm just going to cut a diagonal off each of these half inch pieces, just up to that score line. That's going to help when I come to put my signatures on, because it's going to slide over much easier. And the last one. And now I can put this into my cover. So bring it back. So I'm centralizing it top and bottom. And between my two um, hinges. So a bit of excess glue there. It will dry clear. There we go. So I do this first so that it has time to set. And by the time we've done our signatures, it'll be nice and strong. So now it's time to have a look at the die. So this is the folder and sentiment die. So you can see it cuts like a file folder shape and you can get two of these from one sheet of A4 cardstock. So I'm assuming it's the same in America. So what you're going to need to do first is cut out eight of these. So I'm just going to keep two. You need two per signature. So one sheet of cardstock will make an entire signature for us now. <coughs> Excuse me. And some white cardstock. So I've cut eight out of the black. And now my white cardstock I'm going to use to create my template. So what I'm going to do is take some... Uh, low tack removable double sided tape 
and the hardest bit is finding the end. Here we are. And I'm going to tape it onto my white cardstock, but I don't want to put any tape inside this bit for now because this is going to create my template for my patterned papers. So I'm going to tape the left hand side. And then just take your time and draw around the inside. So holding your die in place, there's a little bit of um, metal sort of uh, sticking out there. So when I get there, you may just want to jump over and then take the tape off. and repeat this side. And once you've done the two of them, you simply cut them out. And what you'll have is a template just smaller than your cutting blade. So my cutting blade, I don't want to focus today, is that raised bit there. And my template is just going to be inside there. So it's just slightly smaller than my folder. So you can see the black showing around the outside. And here's the template for that side. And you just use this then to cover your papers. Oh, not to cover your papers, to cut out your papers. Just bring back my two folders. So let's start by putting the page together then. So I've got my two pages and each signature, now I've already made three of my signatures. So these are my pages. So each page is made with two folders, cut out the cardstock. So you've got your rounded piece one, then the center is actually a pocket. So you can add your photo mats in there and then another photo placement there and onto the back. And the easiest way of doing this is to bring back my black tape. When you cut this, it's got a perforation down the middle, so you can score along that and score along that. And then I'm just going to tape them together. Now, if you don't have this, this tape, it's not the end of the world. I'll show you another method in a second. Cut it up the length of my short bit. Of course, if you wanted to make this your pocket, you would just tape that side. So I'm going to take my tape and place it down that edge. I'm going to bring my other one. Make sure I line them up perfectly. And fold it over. And just repeat on this one. I think this is one of the, probably one of the easiest um, signature pages ever. The tape really does do the work. So I'm just gonna Come to the edge again. If it doesn't meet there, I'm not too worried because it's going to be onto 
my spine anyway, so it's going to be glued there. So I tend to focus more on the pocket side. So now when we fold this back and back, we've still got that bit open, which will slide onto our hinge. So that is your signature done. And you'll see then that the template fits on top. Now one sheet of 12 by 12 patterned paper will cover all sides of our little signature. But because I've gone a bit different, I've gone red, then use the green inside. Then I've gone back to the red. I see the pattern continuation. So when I did these two, I traced there, flipped it and traced there to get the pattern continuation. And again, with the pie going across. And so I've got this one. Now I've already cut that piece and that piece from the red. So I did use one sheet for these three and I needed a second one for here. So if you're going to do it like I've done here, you are going to use a bit more of your papers or a few more different ones. But if you covered each one in just the one sheet, you're only going to need four sheets to cover the whole thing. So we've got that one and we've got that one. Now I've already cut um, my two pieces to come in here. So that's all I've done is cut my paper at six inches. So this piece is six inches tall, placed it there, traced around it, lined up that edge and traced again. And then you get one of your shorter pieces from the end as well. So here we are. Let's do it this way. Because this is a plane on the other side, it does give me a couple more extra options. You see, I traced three of the outer ones, forgetting I already had my red. So I've got one. Trace. Now, normally I would use a pencil for this so I could rub it out. But because I want you to be able to see, I'm using a black pen, which doesn't really matter because I'm going to be using black distress ink around the edge anyway. This is where I start concentrating and goes a bit silent. And then let's just curve the corners a little bit. And as I said, I'm going to use my distress ink. So I'm using my patterns and solids from my Life's a Bowl of Cherries here. Let's find the, um, the patterns and solids do work really well with this. Let's just do this again. So I'm going to use that bottom corner to save me having to do two, two cuts. So if you do have a directional paper here, so if I was using the back, I would have to, of course, make sure I've got one that way and one that way. And because I got the plain one, it does mean I can maximise my paper usage. So 
So you can see I've still got room for um, two of these ones if I want to cover the front and back of my signature as well. So you get all six sides from one sheet. I sort of forget to think the edge. So you see, even though I used the black pen, this would hide if I still had some showing. Let me just re-ink a little bit. There we go. So now I've got my insides, my outsides, and I also have my direction ones for the inside as well. So now I'll just, just take a case of getting my glue and gluing them on. Now I've kept mine quite plain, it's just to save time on the video, but also I quite like it because you can be adding photos to it anyway. So that's why I thought the patterns and solids were a great use for the insides. So now I want my left hand piece. Because I did the pattern continuation, when this goes on, you will see the pattern carry on. So if you are using your um, 12 by 12 patterned papers, you can keep the images going across. Cover our pocket in the middle. And then the back piece. So I said you could just use the same colour or the same paper and cover the whole thing from that one sheet. But I think having that red sort of in between each signature looks really nice. So look what I did with my original. So I had pink, green, pink, blue back to the pink. So you can see the front and back of each signature is in that paper and then insides with the different colors. So there we are, we now have four signatures. We can now come back to our cover and we're just gonna slide them on. So I'm just gonna take off my double-sided tape. I'm gonna run some glue down that just helps things to slide on rather than stick into the tape straight away. And then some glue on the back as well to seal my uh, signature shut. So I'm opening it up and I'm sliding it on and stopping once I get to that score line. So I'm not crossing the score line. If I did that, um, it's not gonna flex. So it's just before the score line. And then, let's make sure this is the one that matches, yeah. So tape on, uh, sorry, tape exposed, glue on. Open it up. Now, I 
Okay, this one. And then the pie one. So between the cardstock and the papers, these signatures are really sturdy, quite strong and thick. Here we go. And just wipe away the excess glue. <coughs> and there you have the base of your album all complete and then it's just a case of decorating the cover and the inside covers as you wish but that's how to use the folder die to create signatures for a little mini pocket album so let's have a look how i'm going to decorate it so i've already done for the back now i'll show you i'll cut the dimensions for you in a second. I'll show you how I, again, maximise my paper to get it all out of the sheet. So this is my liner. And then I'm going to make a pocket using this red one here just to tie in from the red. So let's have a look. I've got my... Um, Paper here, so I've got two of the same sheet this time. I'm going to grab my trimmer and I'm going to cut a piece which is five and a half by three and a quarter. So I'm going to do my three and a quarter from the bottom first. You'll see why in a second. By five and a half. And then this pattern piece here was four and a quarter wide. Now, so if I'd cut my vertical first, it would have been, um, I wouldn't have had such a big piece left over from there. But then I'm just gonna cut the top off. So it's about just under four and a quarter with me now. But I don't mind about the length because that's all I want it to be is longer than where my pocket's gonna be, so it goes behind. So just for um, tying it in, I'm using my large quarter rounder. So this is my um, 10 millimeter one. And I'm link inking the top and the two sides. was you don't want to be cutting this piece first because it would have been uh, too short for doing my pocket. So we've got the cherry paper and we've got these two which are for our pockets. And you might have seen me do this in my um, up leveling of the Annette Green uh, travel album which I did with the Life of Ball of Cherries as well. We just score half an inch around all four sides. Now I've got non-directional paper here. If you're using directional paper, you will need to um, just have a think about where you're putting the tape in a second. Yeah, so if this is my directional paper, you would be keeping the top um, facing upwards. So I want to put tape, as I would do normally for any pocket, down the two short sides and across the bottom between the score lines, which is probably quite hard to see with this spotty paper. And then I'm going to I fold them, will that help? 
my help on the other side. We're gonna cut towards the cross and then just angle out and cut it. So it's just a little bit sharper than just straight across. I'm gonna do the same here. So cut and cut. And then with this one, so they're gonna fold back as your pocket. This one, I'm gonna glue it down. So I'm gonna put it on the back. So now I'm gonna cut some narrower ones. So if this is my score line, I'm just sort of coming just below it and just a tiny bit. So not on the score line, just a bit over. I'm gonna fold it over. So that's just gonna give my pocket a little bit of extra strength. So let's do the same here. So normal pocket taping. Between the score lines. And just fold them so I can see them. Easy on this page. I'm gonna do that large cut on the bottom. And the narrow cuts on the top. And I just want to seal the top shut, so I'm just going to put some tape there. And fold it over. So now let's score these nice and sharp so that they lie flat later on. Now I'm going to bring my scoreboard back just to help me find the centre of my pockets. So my pockets are four and a half, or let me turn it this way, are four and a half, so two and a quarter would be halfway. So I'm just going to score that half inch piece there. And again, two and a quarter. I'm going to take just any um, circle punch, or you could use decorative dies, whatever you want. So I'm going to take it until those two score, uh, score, not score lines, those two lines on the side are in line with my paper, and the bottom of the circle is in line with my scored line that I did just now. And that will just sort of get it more or less in the center. Of course, I could decorate this, add some fussy cuts, elements, some extra cherries if you've got the ephemera pieces. Let's do it again. So I'm lining up those two sides, because that's the middle of that circle, and the bottom of the circle here in line with that score line I made. And again, just distressing it. Oh, one thing, I do need to do one more thing before I glue them in. If I stick them down now, oh, that's not the one, that's my prototype one. This is the one we're making. We're going to have that straight line out me. So, making sure that you do one on the left and one on the right. We're just using that 10 mil again. And that's just gonna nestle in nicely into that corner now. So let's just take the tape off the bottom.
and I've got the wrong measurement. <laughs> These Let me just double check. Yes, I've cut them too long. So I need to come back half an inch. Do you know what I've done it to measure the page rather thing. So remind me, I'm going to put a little um, message at the start when I'm cutting this to say this should be a different measurement. I actually need it to be a quarter inch more. So what I'm going to do Let's have a look. So it's not the end of the world. I need to take an eighth off each side. So that's all I need to do. Rather than do everything again, I just go an eighth on this side. Fold it back. And the same on this side. Fold it back. So there we are, an extra little tutorial, how to rescue your pockets. So I'm just gonna have a bit of overlap here. So I'm just gonna cut it off. Well, that wasn't planned in my tutorial today, but it's also good to see, if you do make a mistake, how it can be rectified. So hopefully now we've got a pocket. Ooh, I need to recut this now, don't I? And re-ink. Re ink that side. and rescued. So that was still in the middle. So that's why I took an eighth from each side. So that my middle would still be correct. So let's take an eighth there and take an eighth there. Fold them over. Ink that side. Fold this over. I have to be careful here because I've already exposed the tape. Catastrophe averted, hopefully. Bring this one in. And there we go. Oh, no. Need to go a little bit more to the left. Crisis averted. So there we are. That's how you rescue your pockets. And then the last piece now is simply decorate the cover however you wish. So I've used some more of my 8 by 8 papers. So I got this piece, which is just a quarter of an inch shorter than my cover. So it's five and three quarters tall by four and a quarter wide. And that's just gonna go on my back, just as it is. I do need to trim this bit from my crocodile earlier. 
and this piece came from uh, the border paper strip. It's not this piece I was after. Uh, this one also came from the border strip. And rather than a width, what I did was I kept moving my border strips page around to see. Now, that would have been a good place to cut down the two reds. That would have fitted nicely in there as well. So rather than a specific measurement, I'm using my papers to dictate how wide it was. But it's going to be roughly about an inch, just over an inch. So this piece was the leftover from that piece. So it's a bit short, but rather than waste it, or it was cut into another sheet, I kept on using my border papers. And I've cut this strip to cover the left hand side. And I've taken some more of my patterns of solids. So I've got the dark blue and I've already inked the edges with my distress ink here. So I'm keeping my cover nice and simple, which is sort of really my style. But of course, I can go back and add some extra fussy cutting and things like that. I could even, I have got some, I could even 3D mount this. Just add some depth. If you wanted this a bit stronger, you could even mat it again onto some black cardstock because the black would tie in, but I think just that much, just that little bit of blue just highlighted it. I could take some of my glossy accents now and add some shine to the cherries. Now I've already used the other two pieces of this paper in a different project. Otherwise, I would have um, fussy cut these stamps out and this central one and raised different parts of it, which is actually what I've done on my other project, which you will see eventually. I don't think it's gonna be for a while. And these buttons can have some glossy accents too. There we go. Just got to be careful now when I move this. So this is your Life's a Bowl of Cherry folder um album now what i haven't said yet is the g45 regular tags i designed the cover you'll see it's usually got it's got a bit more top and bottom than i usually do because you can actually fit the regular tags in there so if you wanted to decorate up a matching tag or two one for the front one for the back um you can go for that as well so hope you enjoyed this project if you have, please uh, leave me some comments in the section below and that thumbs up. I really do appreciate all the support. And yeah, if you grab yourself your folder die. So if you've already got this die, hopefully I've given you a new idea on how to use it um, in a different way. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you all again soon with some more Graphic 45 projects. Mm -hmm.